Welcome back to Miniature Game Montage and another painting for the Average Joe's Guide. Notice this is the Average Joe, not the Average Pro. This kind of paint job certainly will not win you any competitions, but it is a great way to bring your miniatures up to a nice tabletop standard, something that you can be proud of. I am not an expert, I am not a professional when it comes to painting, but I do like for my miniatures to at least look decent on the tabletop. Today we're going to be painting up some Orlock Gangers as they prepare to take part in the upcoming Season 3 Shadows of Primus, and I'm going to walk you through each step of how I painted these miniatures. Alright, the model on the left is going to be our guinea pig today, so sprayed him with a black primer and then hit him from the top with a white slash gray zenithal highlight. And the idea behind that is because the top layer should hypothetically be brighter than the bottom, and the zenithal highlight allows you to achieve that as some of your base coat would show through as if you're painting thin coats. I did model this guy per the box, which he does have a sawed-off shotgun. I've heard that's not very good, so we will be playing that as a different kind of shotgun in our campaign for those that are wanting to know. All right, we're going to lay down some initial base coats, and I'll put all of the paints in the description below. We will start with a German gray, which is a very dark gray, almost a black color, but not quite black. And I just prefer this color over a straight black just because it shades, and it's just not a plain black. You can highlight it a little bit easier. It just it feels like that light hits that gray a little more than it does a black, which I like. So we're going to paint the pants on the bottom as well as his boots. There's um, a good bit of black clothing on this model. We're also going to get his jacket front and back. And then you will want to switch to a smaller brush to kind of get in the top parts around the head. And there will be some shade that runs into these recesses, but it's okay to just go ahead and base coat those in this German gray color. Next up, I got a smaller brush out and we're going to a Vallejo khaki color. Now I do plan on painting a lot of different color shirts like a darker burgundy kind of red, this khaki color, and maybe a darker green type of color. These, uh, this first model is just gonna be this khaki color. So you just wanna take that and get into the, uh, the shirt that he's wearing. And he does have a sleeve on that right arm with some clothing there that you're gonna wanna be sure that you uh, get as well. We're now going to work on the metal bits, and for that I'm going to use a Vallejo Gunmetal Gray. That'll be a great base coat to start. And you're going to want to use a crappier brush for your metallics. You've probably heard this in a lot of places, but the metallic paints just have a tendency to really wear your brushes down a lot faster. So work your way on the shoulders, the servo claw that he has, the piece that runs across the back. He's got some chains hanging down. He's got some spikes and things on his arm. There's obviously some metal pieces on his gun. And then some random locks towards the boots, as well as a latch on the chest. So just kind of work your way around the model, picking out those metal bits. Now there will also be some smaller details on the clothing, these little metal pieces here. So you're going to want to be sure that you grab those as well. All right, and with that done, we're going to move over to the leather work, and we're going to use Vallejo's Leather Brown. And for this, we are going to be paying attention to the bag on the back. And a lot of these are painted black, but I just want to kind of break that up a little bit. A lot of these straps, a lot of the, um, the belts, all of that is going to be painted brown just to kind of break up the black a little bit and give the model a little more contrast. And now with the brown bits done, we are going to go ahead and get a base coat on the skin. For that, I use Tan Earth. I use a lot of paints by Vallejo, so I know Games Workshop, probably Bugman's Glow, seems to be the base coat of choice. The majority of these paints will require two thin coats. You want to be sure that you are thinning your paints down uh, so you don't obscure any details, especially in the face area. Now I did paint his glove in that black, gray, dark gray color as well. We're going to go through and point out some fingers as well that are poking out from that glove. Now 
Now moving on to the cloth bit in the front, we're gonna use the Wolf Gray by Vallejo. It is a game color. And I really like this color because it can really go down over a light or even a dark surface in one or two thin coats and give you a nice finish. Now when doing this, you do want to flip the model around and get the back side of this as well. And also kind of get between the back of the legs there to get the opposite side, just in case you uh, are looking at the model from behind. Okay, lastly, gonna go through and do the hair. And I'm actually gonna make this that German gray color as well. I'm gonna give this some grayish type highlights on it, make him look a little bit older. So you can go through and pick that out. This could be the leather brown color that we used and you could do some blonder highlights. It's really just up to you on what color you wanna make this. So we'll go ahead and do the hair and we will be done with the base coats. Now in looking at the box, I did notice that he has some kind of goggles on. So I went ahead and painted those with a little bit of the gunmetal. And then the band that goes around that, I used the leather brown to touch that up. But now that we're done here, this is a perfect opportunity to go back and touch up anything that you may have spilled over. And once you're happy, we are ready to move over to the wash stage. And for this, I'm going to use the Games Workshop Nun Oil. I'm a big fan of Games Workshop's washes. You could use Agrax Earthshade here if you wanted that brown, very dirtier kind of look. The Nun Oil is going to really tone this miniature down, bring a lot of these colors together. And I just prefer to use black on this particular application. All right, so working our way around the model, getting the wash into all the nooks and crannies. You can just push this around. If you find where it's not where you want it, you could use a wet brush to simply move that wash around, or you could come in with a dry brush to soak some of it up where maybe you've gotten too much. And in about 30 minutes, that wash will be dried, and we can go in and start to highlight this model back up. And the first highlight color we're going back in with is going to be Tan Earth. We're going to use this to highlight a lot of the leather bits that we did, but also to bring some paint back to the face. So I start with the face just to give that time to dry before we move on to another color, but getting the nose, getting the cheeks, and really just leaving that dark shaded tan earth in the recesses. Now you also want to be sure that you get his fingers and I'm also going to use this color to just bring a few subtle highlights to the belt as well as some of the straps and some of the other leather areas that we painted brown. On the back of the bag here I'm going to highlight the edges as well as put a few lines in the middle just to simulate you know some ruffle and some light kind of catching that bag. All right, and working back on the face, we're gonna bring in Dwarf Skin, which is a Vallejo game color. And with some thin paint, we're gonna work on the nose, the cheekbones again, not going quite as heavy as we did with that tan earth, but probably getting 80 to 85% of where that tan earth was, and just going back over and giving that skin some additional color. Now, when models have a lot of skin on them, I will use probably five different paints and blend those paints together in stages to try to make the skin blend together. But because this guy is just a face and he's got some little nub fingers, I'm only going to use three paints here to essentially uh, paint the skin. So just take your time here and turn the model and find out where you want the paint to go to make the face kind of pop out. All right, for the last skin tone, I'm gonna use Vallejo's Flat Flesh. And I'm just gonna go in this time and pick out the most prominent areas, such as the nose, the chin, a quick highlight on the cheekbone, maybe the top of the brow there, just where you expect the light to really catch the face, as well as the fingers. And with the skin complete, we'll move over to highlighting the metallics. Very quickly, just grab some Necron compound and a dry brush. Of course, dry brush is where you wipe most of the paint off on a paper towel. 
and then just come in at a 45 degree angle, make your brush strokes, and uh, highlight up all of these metal areas. All right, next we're gonna highlight the shirt, and I'm gonna come in with some Iraqi sand, which is a pretty bright color compared to the khaki that we put on. Normally I would go through and kind of bring that khaki back up using the khaki itself, but just trying to get a quick job on these guys. So real quick, just picking out the folds in the shirt and giving some quick highlights just to add a little bit of depth to those. And with that complete, I'm gonna come in with some Vallejo bronze and just going to come across the shoulder pads on some of these areas that looked gold on the box. There are some places on the feed and some of the things that you could potentially make this color. So just going to bring those out a little bit. And now we will highlight that German gray, that very dark clothing color that went on the pants. And for this, I'm using the German World War II feel gray. You could use any other kind of gray that's just lighter than the color that you used, which is probably going to be just about any gray out there because it's near black. So we're just going to go through again, picking out the high spots on the jacket, any folds in the pants, and then you can also touch the hair a little bit with this color as well. Now you do want to flip this model around and get the front of the jacket as well, giving those lines up the front as well as on the top where the, uh, the collar is kind of pointed out. I like to also use this color to highlight the gun where we painted some of that black just by running the brush along some of the raised edges here where light would hit it. And then you could also give it a little touch on the top of the glove here where light would be hitting that as well. And last for the hair, I wanted that to stand out a bit more so I did grab the wolf gray and did a quick dry brush on that, rub most of the paint off, and I'm just gonna drag that across the hair to give that some, uh, some additional color. So now we're gonna use one of my favorite colors, the Vallejo Mahogany Brown. I'm sure you could use maybe Reichland Flesh Shade because it's got some red in it, or maybe a technical paint of some type from Games Workshop, but I like this mahogany brown. I'm going to really water this down and test it on the model here. And you can see where it was too much. And that just painted mahogany brown on the model. Just quickly wipe that off. That tells me I need to water this down further, almost to the point where it is a wash. And I'm going to go over a lot of these metal areas to really kind of dirty them up and give them a rusty type of appeal. I'm going to do that on the shoulder pads, on that servo claw. I'm also going to get his weapon as well as the plates and any of the stuff that I just really want some kind of rust and dirt kind of blotchy on there to give it that kind of effect that it's worn, old, and dirty. And with that step, he is ready for some matte varnish, and I'm calling him pretty much done. You could go through and highlight the rag that's on the front there with some of that additional wolf gray. I just wanted that to be dirty because, hey, look, we're, we're in the underhive. So uh, this is a final picture of him at the very end, and then another ganger that I painted up beside him that was a little different. So these two will be coming to a battle report near you very soon. I hope you enjoyed this painting tutorial. Again, I'm not the best painter in the world, but I've picked up things here and there that have helped me along the way, and hopefully I can pass along some of that information to you. And if you're a newer painter or just an average Joe, maybe you'll pick up something that you can use from this. Thanks so much for watching, and we will see you next time.